Uh, I'll show you what the most modern Photoshop can do, but not a particular order. We'll start with the ones that affect the shape of the contour, so the depth and orientation. You notice that depth A and depth B right here, uh, same goes for most attributes, and that's because you can have an individually change the way the raised, so the raised is A and the recessed is B areas looking at matte cap. So what depth does is visually change the elevation on the surface of your model without altering the geometry here. So if we go from this model here and we go back to our matte cap gray, and then we do, let's see, so we've got depth A, so we do depth A of 0.6, and then we do a depth of 1.2. You're going to see it's just causing those transitions to kind of get a little bit more contrasty here. So we'll set that back to 1. Um, let's change the outer line so it covers a larger area in the comic book matcap by moving the depth A to something like 1.5. So let's go back to our uh, comic book shader here. Where did that? There it is. We changed our matcap red wax. Boom. Okay. So. With depth A at 0, this is what our character looks like. And then depth A at 1.5. So we keep cranking that up. There we go. So it's kind of getting our colors a little bit muddier, but it's also increasing the contrast and uh, changing that outline a little bit more. So we'll do again 1.5. Looks like the colors are being duplicated and overlapping. That's because depth B is still set at 0. So yeah, now we're, yeah, so this specular is now being duplicated and muddied a little bit. Uh, a couple ways to fix this. Easiest is just giving, and if we want to smooth this out a little bit, hit Control D. And that'll go ahead and make a subdivision that'll kind of smooth those lines out. Just giving the same value to depth A and depth B. So if you don't want that duplicate look going, let's change depth B to 1.5. And that'll go ahead and bring in the outline and not have that kind of staggered, posterized, muddy effect. The other way is to set the color of B at the bottom to black and just increase the intensity of A. For now, we'll stick with a simpler way and give the same value to A and B whenever we modify a slider. So whenever we're modifying A, we'll go ahead and match B, unless, again, you want that posterized look. Man, this look is so cool. I love it. If you use the same values, but in the negative numbers, you should get the same effect with the colors upside down. So remember when we were flipping in the original one, if you do depth A at negative 1.5 and then depth B at negative 1.5, uh, now the specular went from up here to down here because it basically flipped our image. So we'll probably set this back to 1.5. There we go. Might be useful if you want to invert the direction of light where the highlights are placed, um, but I'd rather not use the negative values here and use the orientation slider in head. Okay, so you'll get the same result. So the orientation slider, orientation A and B. Before we move on the orientation slider, I would remind you that if you want the opposite effect in the outline of your model that is thinner line, you just need to do the smaller values in the depth slider, like 0.5. So instead of 1.5 for the thicker, do 0.5, and that'll give you a thinner outline. Um, orientation A and B are basically a control that allows us to rotate the image of the matte cap. So here's our image right here, and therefore orient the lighting. So if we want the little green highlight right here move slightly from the top um, to the right, all I need to do is put an orientation slider as a value of 45 and then 45 degrees. So orientation A, 45, orientation B, so we don't get the overlap, 45. And now you can see it took this image and just rotated it 45 degrees. Pretty neat. Now let's say I'm not 100% happy with the colors, rather than update the image in Photoshop, I can simply change the hue of the image, changing all the colors at the same time. Uh, hue slider in the modifier subpalette. So here's the modifier subpalette, here's the hue sliders, hue A and B. Uh, I use this, it works in the same way as hue saturation adjustment in Photoshop. And um, you can also modify the saturation intensity of the color in the same way as you would in Photoshop. Uh, so you can change the hue, and you're probably gonna wanna keep a and B the same, and then the saturation, you can crank this up, the intensity, you can crank that up, and kind of start dialing in uh, these changes as needed without going into Photoshop. So if you want to do variants within ZBrush and just keep a same Photoshop base, that's probably the way to do it. Uh, if you have the, the matte cap, you can save the matte cap from the material palette and also save the texture with all the modifications we just did. So we already saved the Photoshop file. Oh, and if you did any of these texture modifications here, so you can go over here to Material Save, and that'll save the matte cap here. And at the bottom of the Modifier sub palette, there is a Create Matte Cap Texture. So if you go ahead and click that, that'll force this out as a texture, and then you can export this as a uh, OpenEXR or a TIFF, and you can kind of load that into whatever you like. 